It's been a minute since we've had this guy on, uh, Byron Pee Wee Jarrett, the QB here at the University of West Florida, back with us. Uh, here we are, six and two. Uh, you know, good conference record, but there's only three regular season games left. How fast does this season seem to fly by for you? Yeah, this is, we were talking about it the other day. It's been the fastest season I've probably played in my history and my career. So it's just, you know, it's been fun. Uh, definitely been fast for sure, but you know, just taking it one moment at a time. Coming off that win last week at Delta, I mean, you know, football is just that kind of game, sports in general, right? I mean, you go from one week at West Isle and the frustration there to the highs of knocking off an unbeaten team. I mean, it's a little bit of a roller coaster ride. How, how are you feeling? Is it, are you able to kind of keep it calm and keep it even keel? Yeah, I feel like uh, this year, especially, I've been, you know, just been in that even even keel mode and, you know, just not getting too high, getting too low. You know, West Style happened, it's gone. But, you know, we got to play back and, you know, we're going to play great teams every week in this conference. Uh, that's why this conference is so fun because you never know what's going to happen. Uh, and, you know, we went out there and we played a great game. I feel like second half, especially, we played, you know, 30 minutes straight as a as a whole team, offense and defense, and, you know, it was a fun one. Was that second half against Delta last week, is that kind of like where this team can be? Is that the ceiling? Yeah, I feel like that is, you know, if we play like that for 60 minutes, I feel like, you know, this team is going to be really, really hard to beat. And, uh, you know, we cut penalties. I feel like this team is won't be beaten. You, we know from last year, you went up to Valdosta. I mean, there's there's a team, they were they were in trouble last year, not mm -hmm. really where they used to be in, but they gave us a game, you know, go to overtime. You had, you had to pull it out yourself, you know, and run one in. I mean, yeah. uh, you know what you're going to get from the Blazers. For sure, you, you're going to get everything they got. Uh, it's a rivalry game. Uh, you feel as soon as you, you know, step on the field. I was new last year and I felt it, you know, the first snap. So uh, it's going to be a real game. It's going to be a 60 minute game. And, you know, I feel like the team that plays the best for 60 minutes is going to come out with the win. How are you feeling? Because, uh, you know, I looked down, and there's like 27 carries last week against Delta. Is that the most you've ever carried the ball since maybe like Wee football? Yeah, that's probably the most ever. So uh, I feel I feel great, though. You know, I feel my body feels great. we got a great staff who, you know, work, works works on me all week. And, you know, the rest of my teammates, I feel like, you know, we couldn't be in a better position right now. And that was a different kind of game plan last week. But you, you and CJ especially able to dominate time of possession. I mean, even if it's not big runs to keep the clock, you know, moving and keep their offense off the field. I mean, those are the little things that fans maybe don't sometimes understand that that's how you win a football game. Yeah, for sure. You know, I feel like, you know, I feel like our fans kind of get spoiled sometimes. We make a lot of big plays. And I mean, we like points and we sure. like yards. We like wins. <laughs> for sure. You know, three play drives here and there. But you know, I feel like last last week, especially the second half, was just, you know, complete offensive domination. And, you know, we just drove the ball down the field. And however we got the yards is how it came. No one really cares about stats on our offense. You have formed a connection. You obviously had one with Caden already. We mm -hmm. saw that your first touchdown last week. But you and John Giles seem to have, you know, it's, it's one of those unspoken things. Uh, you know, as a guy, you had David Durden last year, too. It's mm -hmm. a little bit different. Do you feel like with John, if I throw it somewhere in the zip code that he's in, he's probably going to make the catch? Yeah, it's definitely been some throws where it was like I missed him and he came down with the ball. So, uh, you know, he makes my job a lot easier. So that whole room is just, you know, that whole room is special. And, you know, a lot of people see uh, John's numbers and think, you know, he's the only one getting the ball. But we really got a lot of guys that can, you know, they get the ball in space. Like, they're not going down on one tackle. So I, I enjoy having that room, especially on my side. You spend a lot of time with those guys. So tell me, who, who's the who's the funniest? Who, you know, who's the joker in, in the wide receiver room? And then who who's, you know, who's the old man of the group that's that's serious all the time? Uh, I would say Caden is probably the, the serious one. But, you know, me and him, you know, we came in together and everything. So He's got a scowl sometimes. Yeah. He says that look, you know. <laughs> so he, he, he is kind of – Kind of the both. He, he's funny, but, you know, he's a serious one to the, to the freshman. And then I say the, the funniest freshman, I mean, the funniest really receiver we have is probably uh, Brendan Cook. He's probably uh, he's probably the funniest one. You know, he's a freshman, so still got some time puppy to Puppy dog, right? He's got yeah. some energy rolling around. <laughs> yeah, it's got to kind of, you know, hit him with the, you know, the senior time sometimes. And, you know, they got to tell him to chill out sometimes. But and he's, he's a funny kid for sure. You guys ever get into to, to Caden about his, you know, his male modeling there with his, with his NIL stuff? Because I was like, it's like, is that blue steel that you're rolling out there, kid? Yeah, he uh, definitely, uh, <laughs> I think he's a little Hollywood boy sometimes, but, you know, that's my guy. You also have to have a relationship with the offensive line. I know you and, and Chop are close, but, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a group. And they, it's it's hard, man. They've, they're, they've had injuries, and they're dealing with having to shuffle guys around. And I know it's been a little different for you this year as far mm -hmm. as, like, having to run for your life uh, sometimes. But that, you got to have a bond with those guys up front. For sure. You know, those those guys work harder than anybody on the whole team. Uh, you know, they fight through a lot of injuries. And, you know, they know that it's the dog days of the season, Coach Nobles calls it. And, you know, everyone's sore. Everyone, every team across the country that's playing, you know, 10, 11-game season is sore. It's happened to come playing football. But, you know, those guys push through a lot. And, 
they work harder than anybody. They're still in there, you know, lifting 300 plus pounds twice a week. And you know, I couldn't thank those guys enough. Uh, you know, they do their job. They make my job a lot easier. You know, some people, you know, fans and everything, you know, kind of speak on their behalf sometimes. <laughs> and I, I promise you, it's not hard blocking some of the D linemen we got in the GSC. It's always tough because they're the guys that get called out. When there's a holding, they're going to mm -hmm. say their name and the number. Sure. And it's like, you know, you, you got to kind of watch the play and make sure. For Let's sure. talk about the defense, your yeah. defense for a second, because you're over there watching them on the sidelines. You see them, you know, during the week in practice. I mean, this is a special group and it's different. And and I imagine you're sitting there going, oh, thank the Lord I don't have John McMullen and Byron yeah. Furrier <laughs> and Jake Dorn and company in my face because they they spend a lot of time yeah. in close proximity to the opponent's quarterback. For sure. Uh, I feel like, you know, these these teams that we play only have to deal with them, you know, one Saturday a week. I had to deal with them all fall camp. So, you know, I, I kind of don't feel no remorse <laughs> no, for no, no, no sympathy. For yeah, there was no sympathy. But, uh, you know, those guys, uh, I go to get them for fall camp. It was not fun. You know, there were definitely some days where, you know, I had to question myself if I still had it, you know, some days. But you know, that, that D-line is some different. And then, you know, we got linebackers stepping in and filling in for guys that we got down and they're playing great. And then, you know, DBs, you know, their job is, you know, somewhat easy because, you know, QBs are not comfortable. When you're uncomfortable as a quarterback, you know, it throws off everything. Year two for you, you, you know, got to the final four last year. You know, I know coming into this season, you felt like this team's got, you know, they got the potential. They got, especially you're, you're kind of where you want to be. Sure. I mean, you, not your personal focus, but as a team, do you feel like where it, where it needs to be? Yeah, you know, I feel like, you know, last year there was, you know, 2021 year coming off the first round loss, you know, that was a lot of our focus last year was getting to the playoffs and, you know, focusing on, you know, through the playoffs. You know, right now I feel like this team is focused on Thursday practice. So Good. I just love that we live in the moment. Uh, Coach Nobles definitely keeps us humble and lets us know that, you know, if we don't show up and play for 60 minutes, we can lose. So, um, you know, that, that happened against West Al and, you know, kind of feel like that was a great humbling moment for our team and you know I, I really see this team you know pushing far and you know just focus on the task at hand last thing for you um just thought about it again last week there, every week there seems to be one but last week was an incredible play where you just kind of from the hip literally flip one out there yeah. it's a little bit of Patrick Mahomes it's a little bit of Pee Wee Jared <laughs> you know improvisation what happens in that moment when you're like you know what i'm just gonna do this uh it was you know i think it was like 39 uh you know so third and long not a great position you want to be in and you know i just stepped up in the pocket and you know i feel like jamantes is better with the ball in his hands than me so you know i just i trust them guys i trust myself so <laughs> let him get it for sure you know and I, I know he was gonna make a play and you know i flipped it out there and no one Everyone talks about the pitch, but no one talks about his one-hand catch that he had great. on the play. And you no, know, it was just a great all-around play. O line gave me enough time to step up, and it, it was a great play. Takes everybody, right? They, sure. they take some village. Good luck yeah. this week, my Thank man. You. And we'll we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Yes, sir. Thank you.